Alrighty guys, so today is the day I'm filming my comparison video. So in this video I'm going to be comparing and actually just giving a general overview of the two bikes I own, which is going to be the CB1100 as well as my Benelli TNT 135. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be jumping back and forth between the Benelli and this in the video. Obviously not physically because that would be fucking ridiculous. But I'm going to be jumping in between both bikes telling you the stuff that I like about them, stuff that I don't like about them. And... Just, you know, my general overview of both bikes. Uh, the point of this video is to kind of show y'all the differences between these both, both these bikes. I mean, they're fucking radically different. Uh, they're made for different things. They're very different sizes. Uh, what's up, biker man? Uh, so yeah, it's... That, that's what this video is for, is kind of my experience with both bikes. Uh, and kind of give you an opinion piece uh, about both bikes. It, if maybe you're in the market for getting a pair, you know, uh, a mini moto and kind of a retro cruiser. Maybe you're just in the market for a retro cruiser. Maybe you're just in the market for a mini moto. All those people this is going to be your video because uh, not only am I going to be comparing both bikes but I'm also going to be giving my opinion of both bikes after some time of ownership um, so we're obviously on the Honda so I'll start out with that it is a 2013 CB 1100 I have owned it for about four months now uh, I bought it when it had 14,000 miles. It just clicked over 16,000. So I've I've ridden it a little bit. It was my daily for the longest time, uh, but now my work has me having to have a truck. So obviously, I am not riding this as much as I did. Same thing with the Benelli. Benelli was my daily before I got this. Uh, which, now that I have to have a truck, obviously I'm not riding them as much anymore. But this bike is a very good bike for somebody who has finally got down riding. Maybe you're senior in high school, maybe you just graduated high school, going off to college. Uh, this is a very good bike. Don't let the size fool you. Yes, it's an 1100cc bike. Yeah, it's kind of on the heavy side, but you're definitely not going to kill yourself on this bike. Uh, this isn't a leader crotch rocket. This is, it's not really a cruiser either, just because it is, you're, you're sitting, you know, your stance on it is more of a sports stance, but you're not hunched over um, like a Honda CBR or like a R1 or something of that nature. Uh, you're still kind of sitting upright. You're not leaned back like a cruiser. The handlebars aren't up, you know, next to your face. Uh, so this bike is kind of a mixture of both. And it is the perfect daily bike. Maybe not perfect. I'm not going to say perfect. You do need to put bags on it. I'm not sure how big of bags that you can put on this thing. Um... I've kind of seen some people that are able to kind of do what the BMW guys do and have like goddamn a trunk, you know, a car trunk worth of storage on these bikes, but that's not really what this bike is for. You know, you're not going to be, you can cross country something like this, but this bike is mainly for having fun. Uh, I compare this bike to a Miata or 
you know, a S2000, a RX-7, a, you know, something that's sporty, but can still get you decent gas mileage, can still, you know, it's not going to kill you, it's not going to, you know, do something of that nature, it's just a fun bike that has gobs of low-end torque, uh, that's kind of what this engine is for it has size displacement but it doesn't use it to hit a top speed you know it doesn't use it to pop wheelies it doesn't use it to do anything like that it uses it so that you have a fun canyon carving cruiser sports like bike uh, and it's not you know ridiculously uh, I'm trying to find a fucking word uncontrollable it's not uncontrollable at all even though it's an 1100 cc bike so this bike would be perfect for somebody who's stepping up from like a 250 a 300 uh, maybe like I went from the Benelli to this so but I had crotch rockets before this <laughs> So obviously you can see that it is quick, but with a stock tune this thing only goes 115 and once you get around the 80 to 100 mile an hour mark, the aerodynamics on this thing are trash. So you're definitely not gonna, you know, be racing this bike on the highway or nothing. It's, it's made for cruising. This bike is that car. This bike is an FRS BRZ. You can have fun on back roads. You can have fun on, you know, 45 to 65 mile an hour roads. But if you're on some highway trying to keep up with bikes going 100, you're gonna have a bad time. Uh, so this bike is definitely a good, you know, sporty enough bike that you can take through the canyons and through the twisties but it's not so uncomfortable like a cross rocket that you can't ride it every single day uh, I obviously put 2,000 miles on it within three four months so definitely a bike you can daily uh, as I mentioned gas mileage is pretty decent on this thing uh, I'm not really sure how many miles to a tank I get. Uh, I haven't really paid attention that well to this thing because it's honestly really fun. Um, I like the sound of it. It has, it doesn't have a crotch rockety sound. Um, depending on the type of exhaust you put on it, you can get that kind of buzzy B sound. But I like the stock exhaust. It has that, you know, you can hear the electronic fuel injection working. You can hear, you know, the transmission working. But you also have that kind of low-end grumble uh, that, you know, something like a Triumph or uh, not really Harley grumble, but more of that buzzy, a Ducati sound, you know, something like that. Uh, the bigger leader bikes that maybe don't, oh my god, look at that. Uh, maybe something that, you know, isn't made for sport riding, but more, you know, this, this classic cafe racer style bike. Uh, I really like this bike. It's a very, it, it's, the actual physical size of the bike is not that big. Um, even though it's an 1100cc cruiser style bike, it's not as big as your Harleys or your Indians or nothing like that. Um, honestly, if y'all have ridden other, like, naked bikes, your FZ09s, your, you know, something like that, uh, I forget what the Suzuki Jixxer one is. But all of those bikes 
are about the same size as this. Handlebar width, all of that. Nope. No, that ain't a cop. Thought we had some popos, but we don't. Um, so yeah, the actual physical size of the bike isn't that big. It is on the heavy side compared to like your other cross rocket leader bikes. Um, definitely if you tip it over, you're gonna have to have two people to pick it up. Uh, there are no like forward foot pegs. So it, when you tip it over, it's gonna hit the handlebar. Uh, so you definitely need two people if you do unfortunately lay this thing down. I've only laid it down once and I was standing still. Thank God. Uh, I was sitting in a parking lot and I had I was trying to pull out and a car came and so I like slammed on the brakes and got all fucky wucky and I just literally just laid it down on the ground. So it wasn't a big fall but I then needed to wait for somebody to drive by and I waved them down and was like, hey, can you fucking help me pick this bitch up? So. Definitely, you know, a good daily driver, daily rider bike. Things I don't like about this bike. Mentioned it before. Aerodynamics. Uh, right now it's not that bad. I'm going about 55. Uh, definitely feel the wind hitting you. Obviously you have no windshield. Uh, you can get wind screens for this bike. You can get like a front fascia that covers your suspension and whatnot that kind of help the airflow a little bit more. But the aerodynamics are not there, obviously, because this is made to be more of a cafe racer style bike. Uh, aerodynamics are not its strong suit. But on the highway, it gets fucking ridiculous. Uh, you will get death wobble, not because you're going fast, but because the wind is hitting the mirrors. And if you have like some kind of weird ass cross wind, you can feel the bike kind of woo. And it gets to the point where you're like, okay, I just, I literally have to go like 65. I can't pass anybody, can't do anything. So that is a downside to this bike is aerodynamics. Uh, I guess the gas mileage is good. I mean, I when I was daily in it, driving it 20, 30 miles a day, I was filling it up once a week. So that is, you know, I guess that's good for, you know, coming from a car to a bike but other bikes probably get better gas mileage uh, especially your bigger adventure cruiser bikes uh, like your BMWs your KTM's stuff like that uh, another thing I don't like which is more of a personal preference uh, you know an aesthetic thing there is a lot of chrome on this bike uh, the fenders are chrome the handlebars are chrome, the front forks are chrome, you got a chrome gas cap. There are some like gaudy pieces, which I understand why they did it. They made it look like a classic retro bike. But that's not really my forte. There's a part of the bike that's like, it's like a brushed aluminum. It's like a more of a lighter silver brush aluminum look. It's on the, uh, Kind of like the little storage bins behind the engine i wish everything that was chrome on this bike was that color because i feel like that would be that would look so much better it's kind of like i don't know if y'all could see this gray stripe that's what color they are these little storage parts on the bike and i wish the entire bike not the entire bike but the the things that are chrome on the bike i wish were that color what the fuck are these people doing Mr. Subaru, lesbian in a Subaru. Uh, yeah, so kind of, kind of gaudy stuff, chrome stuff. I mean, I don't. That's not a big deal. You can fucking repaint shit, especially fenders. 
but uh, stuff like that is kind of, you know, meh. Personal preference, shit like that, but overall, really like this bike. Uh, somebody who's looking for like a cafe racer style, a modern retro style bike, I would definitely tell them pick up a CB 1100. Uh, I've ridden, I think it's the Scrambler, not Yamaha Scrambler. Is it Triumph? That also makes a Scrambler. I did not like that bike. Uh, I also rode. Was it the Scrambler or the Tiger that has the exhaust go like right by your right leg? Fucking hated that bike too. Uh, and those bikes are way more expensive than this bike. You can pick these used for eight to ten, and those bikes are, you know, well above ten thousand. So, yeah, I definitely, definitely recommend this bike. I don't know if I'll keep it just because, like I said, I'm, I don't. I can't daily a bike anymore so I don't know if I'll keep it because this definitely isn't like a toy bike like you know your Harleys are going to be better for cruising you know your Indians are going to be better for cruising your more sport oriented bikes your CBRs your R6s and R1s your Ducatis those are going to be better for racing and doing canyon carving and you know stuff like that this bike is like a jack of all trades masters of none which is fine for a daily but if you're not if you don't need a bike to daily then you know if you just want to pick up a bike that's a toy choose one of those other bikes don't choose this this is a good daily bike this is a good bike if this is your only bike because it does do everything. You can put bags on it if you need to. Uh, I was going to, but now that I have a new job that requires me to have a truck, I'm not gonna invest any more into this bike. Um, it's fucking reliable. Uh, I do have a video, I might do it as a short, of a dead battery, but that was because I was sitting in a parking lot for 45 minutes and uh, with the lights on So that's how the battery died. But that was the only problem I've had on this bike Other than me missing shifts But that's because I don't wear boots Like that <laughs> Yeah Yeah, I'm kind of in my squid outfit you know, no jacket, no boots, shorts, just a helmet and gloves. But yeah, that's kind of my opinion on this bike. I like it. I would definitely, if somebody wanted to get a bike, and it wasn't necessarily their first bike, but they didn't want something that you know they would die on I definitely tell them to get something like this because this thing is awesome so now we're gonna I'm gonna switch over to the Benelli give y'all my opinion on that bike and what I like and dislike and everything on that bike and wrap up on the TNT 135 the mini moto so I will it will be five minutes for me but it will be one second for y'all alrighty so now as y'all can see I am on the Benelli and it's stalled. And that is one of the things I will talk about. Alright. <laughs> yeah, let me do a review about a bike that fucking stalled on the way out of the neighborhood. Let me put some gas in it. Maybe that's why. 
Hello, little doggy. And it stalled again. All right. So. This is my 2021 Benelli TNT 135. It is a mini moto. It is a China clone, even though Benelli is an Italian company. It's an Italian design bike. I talked about all this in my Benelli video. Uh, if y'all haven't watched it, go fucking watch it. But, this is it, and I got, I've owned it for about six or seven months now. It was my daily before the Honda. My fucking Wrangler's getting it. Uh, I got it with about 4,000, I think it was like 4,600 miles on it. It is at 72.43. And this thing fucking rocks. I love these little bikes. Groms, you know, Benelli's. Uh, Z125s, whatever the fuck. These bikes are so fucking fun. And it's fucking stalled again. Let me get some bike gas in this bitch. Um, yeah, I, lo I love these, these little bikes. And I got it for to be a pit bike for when we went to races and whatnot. Because I would see a bunch of people, they'd be on Groms and shit. And they would ride around the pits. They would use these as pit bikes. Oh. But, uh, yeah, th these fucking bikes, I love these things. And so I picked this up, kind of did my research on it, picked it up, picked it up. And it was my daily for two, three months, back and forth to work on this. Um, so let me get, because there's definitely going to be more bad than good. Uh, but let me do the good first. And then I'll tell you the shit that I don't like. Look at that. Oh my god, what's that over there? Okay. Hopefully I didn't get that on camera. Um, yeah, I love these. I, I love this little bike, but there are a lot of problems with it. Which, because of the price tag, because I kind of knew what I was getting into, I really did not give a fuck. Um... I didn't talk about this with the Honda. I haven't changed anything on the Honda. Obviously, I have new tires on this. White walls. Um, Stop inside and grab a cold, refreshing mountain oh my drink. god, I'm splashing. She's a squirter. Alright. Uh, yeah, look at that. A dollar twenty-five to fill this, or a dollar twenty-five, four twenty-five to fill this bitch. No, I don't need a receipt. Only a gallon fuel tank. All right. Now we can talk about this bitch. So things I like. It's very small. Like this thing does not take up any fucking room. And it is amazing on gas mileage. So as y'all saw, it takes about I think I think the tank is like one and a quarter or maybe one and a half gallons. And that will last me 150 miles. So you do the math. That's about a hundred miles per gallon. And daily in this, that was fucking amazing. 
I'd fill it up every couple of days for, as y'all saw, less than five bucks. And it would last me for, you know, a few days. So definitely a good thing about this bike is that it's amazing on gas mileage. And it is so much fucking cheaper than a Grom. I don't know where y'all live and y'all's prices, but here, Groms are like four to five grand. Doesn't matter if it's new, doesn't matter if it's used, doesn't matter if it's tricked out, doesn't matter if it's ragged out. Four to five grand. These bitches new are like 2,500 bucks, maybe 3,000. I got this one used for two. So, price point is definitely a plus. But, what I'll get into the negative side is it's cheap. <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, what I also like, it is a five speed. Um, now, I know. Newer Groms come in five speeds, but they used to be four speeds. Uh, this was the first kind of mini moto that came with five gears. Like, you know, the normal amount of gears for any other vehicle. So, like, normally, that'd be it on a Grom. That's it. That's fourth gear. But guess what? Oh, my God, I have another gear. So, I think that also equit equi equits... I don't know what I was going to say. Uh, equi equi I don't even know the fucking word I was going to say. Oh my god, I'm having a brain fart. But it's the reason, probably one of the reasons why this thing is so good. Gas mileage. It's because it has five gears. So you are still revving the piss out of it just because, you know, it's a 135cc mini moto so you're gonna be revving the piss out of it but you have an extra gear to rev the piss out of it in so you'll be able to go just a little bit faster um now obviously kind of like the honda this thing has no wind protection but you're not fucking going that fast I think the fastest I've been on this thing is like 72, and that was down a very steep bridge. Uh, this thing does not go that fast. Usually on flat ground, you're about 60, 65. So, not quite fast enough to go on the highway. Uh, I would not recommend it. That'll probably be a downside. Oh well, I threw a downside with your upsides. Uh, but, you know. Since you're not going fast enough, wind will never be an issue. Uh, I'm trying to think of some good, other good shit. I said it was small, you can literally park it anywhere. Um, I guess that's really it for good side. You can have a lot of fun on this thing. And kind of like how the CB, if the CB is your Honda S2000 and your BRZ and FRS, this is going to be your Japanese K car. You know, something that's just as fun as maybe those other cars, but there's no fucking way in hell that you can do any of that fun anywhere near a major road. Like, this is like one of the major roads through the woodlands. It's, I think, a 45 or 55 mile an hour speed limit I'm going 65 and I'm barely keeping up with the car in front of me and I'm, I'm max this is it this is as fast as it goes so definitely not a bike that you can use anywhere other than you know maybe downtown in a major city or you know I definitely wouldn't you have one of these bikes thinking you're gonna daily it in like the country where you know even though the speed limit may be 65 people are going 80 do, do not ride that fucking this fucking bike on one of those roads 
Um, but yeah, so that's all the stuff I like. It's definitely, it's just a fun little bike. It's just, if you've ridden any kind of mini moto, it's hard to explain why they're fun, but they are. And, you know, it, it, the attention you get when you're riding on them. If you're one of those people that are like, man, I want something that, you know, has a niche community and every time I'm out, people, you know, it attracts eye, eyeballs and stuff like that. Th this, one of these, Mini Moto, get one. And I'm about to go into the negatives. If you do not care about the stuff that I talk about, buy one of these fucking bikes, especially over a Grom or over a, you know, Z125 or whatever. If, if what I'm about to say doesn't steer you away, or you're kind of like, oh, I can deal with that, buy one of these bikes. Because I'm able to deal with it, but maybe some people aren't. So, for the negatives, the number one thing about this bike is fucking build quality. The, you know, you, you, it's China-made Italian design. So, you know, obviously, don't expect fucking too much either way. Uh, but even then the the build quality of this fucking bike is atrocious so as y'all saw earlier how it kept stalling because i haven't ridden this bike in like two weeks and it it was like it still had a quarter of a tank left but it was still fuel starving that is just an issue that these bikes have uh, some people say, oh, warm it up. Some people say, oh, don't just hop on and ride. You got to let it cycle the fuel. It does not fucking matter. Uh, I have ran into the fact that if it is below half a tank, expect it to stall. And that's just a quirk. And this bike has a lot of quirks. And if you dealt with, you know, Italian bikes, fucking Italian cars, you know quirks are just a thing so if you don't care about quirks okay cool but also it's just the fact that nothing really quite fits so I'll give you an example so right here in my clutch as y'all can see this bitch just moves around this screw you can see that I have rounded that motherfucker off and on the bottom side, there's a nut. I've actually rounded off that side of the nut. So it is as tight as it can go. And it's still fucking loose. Brake side, not as loose, but you know, whatever. Uh, the feel of the bike just feels I don't know. This has play to it, as you can see. I don't know if y'all can see. It does have play to it. And, you know, it's just it's just little stuff that it's like, okay, this is not a well-built bike. But other than the stalling when it's low on gas, I have not had any problems with this fucking bike. Other than the chain coming off. But the chain coming off was because I needed a new tire. The tire kept going flat. It would shift the chain and the chain would fall off. I've gotten a new tire, no problems with the chain anymore. So, yeah, I mean, th th this thing, I have not had any problems. It's never left me stranded. Even when the chain would come off, the chain's fucking easy as shit to put back on. No problems with that. You know, it it's. There's no weird maintenance shit. You know, oil is just like any other bike. You know, brake fluid's just like any other bike. There's nothing that would be like, oh, there's specialty parts or whatever. Nope. I got my fucking filter from Walmart. Uses regular motorcycle over fully synthetic oil. Like, it is a very good little bike it just has these things where you're like mm, 
do I really should I pay the extra two grand for a Honda or a Kawasaki that has better build quality I don't know maybe if you're using this bike to daily every single day that wasn't the purpose that I had originally bought this bike for that's just what I happened to start doing just because it was getting such good gas mileage and I was physically able to daily this bike because I wasn't going on any highways or anything back and forth to work I was I'm literally I would take the road that we're on now back and forth to work so you know if if build quality or you know peace of mind uh, is a big factor for you okay don't buy this bike but if you like the look I think it I, I love the look of the bike with the dual exhaust has kind of like a Kawasaki body type to it uh, or not Kawasaki Ducati body type to it kind of like an Italian sports bike body on it fairings and everything Alrighty guys, sorry about that. The fucking battery died. I knew I should have charged it after I filmed the Honda section. But I didn't. And so it fucking died. But we're back now. And yeah. Now I gotta fucking remember what I was talking about. Uh, I think I was wrapping up the Benelli section. Uh... So, yeah, you know, if this, if the, something that, you know, if, if you're looking at a bike and you're, you know, just looking for something cheap, looking for something that, you know, a mini moto that you can maybe use as a stunt bike, use as a practice bike for you and your siblings, uh, maybe you're in you know, freshman in high school, got your first job, and you want to learn how to ride a motorcycle, pick up a fucking Benelli, because, you know, if it, it doesn't matter if you wreck it, it doesn't matter if you, you know, blow it up, it doesn't matter if something breaks on it, because they're cheap bikes, uh, you know, if you're looking for a pit bike, like I was. If you're looking for, you know, a mini moto that doesn't break the fucking bank, like a Grom or a Z130, 125, or, you know, whatever. Uh, definitely get a Benelli, or at least think about getting a Benelli. Now, if you're a person that's anal about stuff, uh, you know, a common problem on this bike is the shift linkage brakes. I haven't had mine break, and I've ridden the piss out of it for 3,000 miles. Uh, but that is a problem I see on forums. If you're, you know, anal about, say, you know, the this being loose, or, you know, just, you want everything to be 100% perfect, uh, don't get a Benelli. Um, even if you get one with low mileage, say you ride more than 1,000, 2,000 miles in a year, this stuff is going to pop up and you'll probably be upset about it. But I don't really give a fuck about those things. And so I feel like this is an awesome bike. I love it. And I'm going to keep it. Is this Woodland, Lake Woodlands? Hell yeah. I can go back toward the house. Uh, so yeah. You know. I really like this bike. Uh, I probably am not going to get rid of it. Like I am planning on getting rid of the Honda. Even though the Honda is a vastly, vastly more superior. Superior? Superior and, you know, better made bike, better all-around bike. I just don't have use for it uh, like I did, you know. I don't need, I can't daily a bike anymore. But 
the use for this was to be a pit bike. So guess what? This is a pit bike. I'm gonna be taking it to races and, you know, stuff to ride around on, for my nephew to ride around on. Uh, you know, kind of why I bought the bike was to be a pit bike. So, I don't know if I'll be filming more with the Honda. Just depends on how long it takes me to get rid of it. You'll probably see more videos of me on the Benelli. Uh, but I did buy another vehicle recently, which I'll be making a video about that here soon. Uh, which, again, that vehicle may not last a long time, but, you know, you'll see. You'll see what it is, and then you'll understand kind of why I bought it. Uh, but yeah, my, I guess my conclusion for these two bikes is that if you're a motorcycle person and you're looking into getting multiple bikes instead of just one bike, I would highly suggest getting a mini moto as part of your multi-bike garage because these things are fucking awesome. If you care about build quality and you don't really care I guess about any kind of cheap alternative go ahead get a Grom get a Z125 whatever but if you do want like a cheap fuck around bike that you don't care if you wreck like I'm gonna put knobbies on this bitch I'm gonna put knobbies on it take it down to the lake or to the riverbed uh, when I go shooting, you know, I, I'll put knobbies on this thing. That way I can take it down there. Like, I do not give a shit about this bike. And if you're looking for a bike like that, and maybe you're looking at other Chinese alternatives, and, ch you know, China clones and shit, I would say stop fucking looking. Don't get a Vader. Don't get anything else. Get a Benelli. Now, you know, the case for the Honda would be, say you have a multi-bike garage, you probably don't need a Honda. But if you're looking to create a multi-bike garage, start with a Honda. Um, start with the CB1100. And then build your way up, say, all right, now your CB1100 is kind of your weekend bike, or maybe that's your daily. Now get, you know, an R1 as your track bike. Get some kind of mini moto as your fuck around bike. You know, that would be a good bike to start your collection with. But say you already have an R1, say you already have a BMW, Motar, you know, adventure bike, or a Ducati Multistrada, or, you know, something like that. I would not add the CB1100 to your garage, unless you want a bike that maybe you can do a lot of shit to, and make it into, like, a cafe racer style bike. Okay, go ahead and get the CB1100, because that's a very good... I think out of all the retro bikes, it's the best. Uh, but if you're not looking for to make a cafe racer bike, say you just want to buy a bike that's already a cafe racer, if you can find a CB1100 that's already been converted, cool. But say, you know, you don't want to go through all the work and the trouble of converting the bike to a cafe racer style. Go ahead and get one of the pre-built ones. I think it's it's some Indian company, Royal Enfield. I think they make one. Uh, the Scrambler's kind of close, but I didn't really like the Scrambler. Um, you know, there are a few 
I think BMW makes one, the R9T. I really like that bike, but it's, you know, on the expensive side. So, you know, there's that as well, price. The Honda is definitely going to be cheaper than a BMW or, you know, Triumph or something like that. And it's going to have a bigger engine than the Triumph. Maybe not. I, I don't know what size the BMW is. Is it a 900 or something like that? But those are going to be probably faster bikes than the Honda. But the Honda, like I said, is a jack of all trades. And so, you know, the Honda will probably be more comfortable than those bikes. And, you know, it's it's a Honda, so it's probably going to last a lot longer. If it doesn't last as long, it's not going to have weird ass shit that goes wrong. Uh, like a Ducati or like a maybe a BMW that if something goes wrong on that bike it's going to be a higher price tag that's not going to be the case for the Honda but you know those are all things that you got to consider and so if you have a multi-bike garage and you want a mini moto get a fucking Benelli and I think that's why I can make a case into buying the Benelli over the Honda. Because if you're starting out riding, get a Benelli. If you want to add a mini moto to your collection, get a Benelli. But I can't make that same argument for the Honda. The Honda is an amazing bike. I love the Honda. But if you or starting out, that's not a good bike because it is a little bit on the heavier side. If you're moving up from a 300 or a 250, get a CB 1100 because that's a good upgrade. But if you've already started riding and say you already are comfortable on an R1 or you know a 1250 GS BMW or you know something like that, the Honda is going to be a downgrade. So the CB1100 is definitely in a weird spot, even though it's a very good bike. I, I don't know, I guess, who would want to buy one uh, other than the person that wants a retro-looking, hipster-looking bike. And so I guess that's my conclusion to this video. Uh, obviously I've talked about what I like about both bikes, what I don't like about both bikes, why you should get one, why you shouldn't get one. And I hope this video kind of shows y'all, you know, my perspective of the bikes. Maybe y'all have different perspectives, you know, maybe you're like, oh, I fucking love the Honda, and I think everybody should have one, no matter what fucking bike you own already. Uh, maybe you're like, you know, the Benelli really isn't that bad of a bike, and, you know, the things that are wrong with it have been documented, they're on forms, and that should be enough. I agree but you know there are those people that are out there that may not they may want a hundred percent perfect bike in the Benelli is not that but it's still a bike you should own if you want a mini moto so I guess that concludes my video it is so much fucking nicer today as y'all can see all week it's been foggy and rainy and shitty and it is amazing and so that's why I made this video because I could actually finally ride the bike and it not be below zero or rainy which has been the last two weeks look at that you can even see the moon I don't know if y'all can see it but I can fucking see the moon
That's how clear the sky is today. So y'all have a good one. If you want to see more motorcycle content, let me know. It'll probably be on the Benelli, but you know, if y'all want to see me just riding around the woodlands, we could do some car spotting because there are a lot of fucking nice cars around here. I'm seeing them all the time. So, if, you know, you want to see car spotting from a mini moto, just let me know if y'all want to see shit like that. And y'all have a good one.